How's it going friends? Welcome to an updated version of my EXP guide that's going to be full of details and everything. So if you want to kind of skip to a part that you may not know, I'll have some timestamps below. Now this video is going to be very similar to what I had before. I'll have to leave a link down to that one if you guys want to check it out, but it's basically the same thing with a few new additions. So with that, let's go ahead and get right into it. So how to increase your experience in this game is by increasing your intelligence and no matter or whatever intelligence you gain, no matter the source, it's always 2% per point of intelligence that you have. So let's say that you have a total of 30 um, intelligence on your character. That'll be a total of 60% increased experience gain. Now what you guys are about to see are many sources on how to increase your intelligence as well as gain more experience and everything will be able to stack and I'll let you guys know what is unable to be stacked. So up first is perk cards and perk points. Now this is the one of the better ways to increase your intelligence and XP gains just right off the rip especially if you're starting off as a new character. Now if your goal is to maximize as much intelligence and XP gains during let's say a double XP weekend or leveling your character. One way to go about it is, is investing 15 points directly into intelligence, where those 15 points will be equivalent to 30% increase intelligence. Now, if you have legendary perk coins and enough to max out the legendary perk card, the intelligence perk card, you'll be able to gain an extra 5 um, and intelligence as well as an extra 10% EXP gain. Now, I understand, like, well, you can only put 15 points into a stat. Why do I have to get... Uh, the legendary perk cards. The reason why is because even though you have 15 points into that perk card set, it will still stack the passive. So 15 plus the 5 from the in legendary intelligence perk card will be a total of 20 intelligence, which is equivalent to 40% increased experience just from perk cards. Now this also works for, let's say, a melee build if you want more strength, 15 points into strength, max out uh, the strength legendary perk card with 5, it not only increases the damage for melee, but also increases your carry weight. Yeah. But now that you have your perk cards ready, you can actually increase your intelligence or increase your XP gains more by actual perk cards. So for Inspirational is a great perk card to get, especially if you're starting a new character because at max level, you'll be able to get 15% experience in, or 15% increased experience when you're on a team. It is a Charisma perk card. Up next, we have Stranger Numbers, which increases your positive effects of mutations by 25%. Um, it's another Charisma perk card, and this is going to be a little bit harder for beginners, but if you're able to get certain mutations, um, this will be very, very useful, and I highly recommend getting it no matter if you're doing an EXP build or if you need it for any of your other damage builds or whatever. Another card that you uh, should get is Class Freak because there are some mutations that do reduce intelligence, so if you're really trying to mid-max your intelligence, you can always use Class Freak to reduce it, or you can always retake the mutation that has the negative stats that you don't like, to completely suppress those stats for an hour. So let's say Marsupial, it does have negative intelligence, and if you want to completely remove that negative intelligence, you can always use the Marsupial again. You'll get the uh, positive bonuses and completely suppress all the negatives for an hour. But last but, but last and not least, I did forget this one in the previous video, um, is Night Person. It is a perception card. It increases your intelligence by 3 when you max it out from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in-game. So it's a nice chunk of time for you to have an extra boost in your intelligence and it's always nice to have if you're trying to mid-max or get a little bit more um, percentage towards your EXP gains. Now for mutations, there are four mutations that you should have and that is Egghead, which increases your uh, intel or intelligence by 6 and Earth Mentality would buy plus two all stats or plus three with strange in numbers. Now the difference between herbivore and carnivore is the foods. Herbivore is plant and veggie based foods and carnivore is meat based foods. Now speaking of foods, here is what we currently have for our food buffs that is available here in the game. There is a wide variety of different ones and it all depending on which mutation you decide if you do decide to use one will determine on how much experience and what you will be needing in order to increase your experience gains. So for Carnivore, you have Tasty Squirrel Stew, which increases your um, experience gain by 10% with no mutation and by 20 with the mutation. With Broiled uh, Scorched Peach Brains, it's plus 3 int with no mutation and plus 6 intelligence with, no, uh, with the mutation. 
Now those two stack. Tasty squirrel stew and, bro and broiled brain stew stack. Canned meat stew is an additional food that you can get in replace of tasty squirrel stew. But canned meat stew is less experienced and can um, only stack with broiled scorched beast brains. Tasty squirrel stew and canned meat stew cannot stack. Now for the herbivores, we have cranberry relish, brain bombs, which is the exact same stats as tasty squirrel stew and broiled brains, but for herbivore. Now the difference is that cranberry cobbler and brain fungus soup are the lower versions, easier to cook um, foods for herbivore. And the ones that stack is the brain bombs and uh, cranberry relish or the cranberry cobbler or the brain fungus soup. So technically, to put in short, anything that shares the same stats, so like percentage percentage of uh, food buffs will not be able to stack. Intelligence and percentage will be able to. So any of those combinations will work as long as it doesn't share the same increase, if that makes sense. Now, not uh, last but not least for um, Nuka Twists. They increase your intelligence by two, but the thing about them is that you'll have to roll it. So basically you have to take multiple uh, Nuka Cola Twists in order to hopefully get plus two intelligence. Um, you can also increase your your odds of getting intelligence if you put on Nuka um, Cola Nut or Cola Nut, sorry, it's an endurance per card, and it'll give you three chances, two to three chances of actually rolling intelligence. Now I know some of you guys are going to say or questioning why didn't you include Nuka Cola Cranberry? Well, because Nuka Cola Cranberry now has a different use. If you have Leo Petrov from Season 11, the Nuka World on Tour ally, you can give him one Nuka Cola Cranberry for a 5% EXP buff for one hour a day, which is also very nice because we did get a new ally this season for Season 12 named Steven. Don't know his last name, but he's Steven. And he will give you a Mothman Blessing that does stack with Leo's buff. And he also does give a 5% experience buff for a total of 10% between the two. Now, if you don't believe me, I'll show you a picture right here. And there it is. And yes, you're able to stack them. And all you got to do is just either have two camps with one on each one. Turn in the Nuka-Cola Cranberry, swap the camp, talk to Steven, get the Blessing and you're good to go. Now up next we have camp buffs. There are two different buffs that you can get, which is the sleeping in any bed. For any kind of rested buff, no matter what it is, um, you'll get a 5% experience. Duration is determined on which kind of rested buff you'll get. Um, we also have the derby game, which also, or, which is also a camp item that will give you a plus 3 intelligence. Now if you don't have this, um, this is what it looks like. And you can also go to another person's camp to find it just in case. Now for Under Armour, we have Unyielding, which is great for bloody builds because it does give you plus 3 all stats, and if you have all 5 pieces, it will give you 15 intelligence. For full health builds, you kind of just want to go for the second star roll, which gives you plus 1 intelligence on all 5 pieces. But if you're running Unyielding, if you really want a mid-max, you can go Unyielding with plus 1 intelligence to get a total of 20 intelligence for your armor. Now. For casual shielded under armor or shielded lining casual under armor, it's the best one that you can get, but the only downside is that it's pretty rare to obtain. Now to get this plan, you need to learn how, or you need to learn these three plans, which is the treated lining, resistant lining, and protective lining casual under armor plans before you get a 5% chance for it to drop from the daily queen of the hunt, which is a daily located in the mire. Now, if you don't want to farm this or you don't care for getting under armor, you can always substitute it, substitute it with the vault shielded under armor. That will give you plus two intelligence and it's just as good. A little bit easier to obtain as well. Now for chems, magazines, bobbleheads, Barry Mantats is probably the most well-known in intelligence booster there is out there and it's probably more affordable. Leader bobblehead will be the best bobblehead to use because it gives you 5% compared to intelligence, which is a 4% increase because it's plus 2 intelligence. But if you have intelligence bobbleheads and no leaders, might as well use the intelligence bobble. So the two biggest buffs that have the most impact is the magazines Backwoodsman 6 and Live Love 3. Backwoodsman 6 for carnivore and Live Love 3 for herbivore. Now here on screen you're going to see some buffs. Well, I'm a herbivore and I'm going to be using Live Love 3s and right now we have Brain Bombs and Cranberry Relish with 6 intelligence and 20%. Now if I throw in a Live Love 3, 
no teammates, will have 9 intelligence and 30% experience. For the last and final photo, with strange in numbers, live love threes, herbivore, and teammates, it'll boost it up to 11.25 intelligence and 37% experience, which is a pretty huge jump, and this does work for carnivores if you use Backwoodsman 6 for tasty squirrel stew, as well as broiled scorched beast brains. Unfortunately, this will not work for canned meat stew. We're almost done, guys, I promise, but um, up next we have teams and lunch boxes. You want to make sure that you're on a casual team. If you're a solo player, all you have to do is just start a casual team in a private world if you have access to it to benefit from the plus one intelligence. But if you're in a casual team and form all bonds, you'll get a, a total of four intelligence, which is equivalent to 8% experience. And finally, we have lunch boxes. If you use four, no matter if you're alone or with other people, and if someone else uses it, you'll be able to get 100% bonus experience when four are opened for an hour, I believe, or two. Can't remember the duration or the duration, but it's a long time. And you can always get lunch boxes a variety of different ways from the scoreboard, from either Sam or the robot at Crater for gold bullion, or you can get it for the atom shop which i probably wouldn't recommend unless you're rolling in atoms might as well maybe i don't know but last but not least we have event buffs there are three different events that you can gain experience buffs from in this game one of them is a reoccurring event that is always around which is path to enlightenment if you complete it you'll get a mothman blessing um which gives you five percent experience um, if it's meat week, if you turn in all of your, I think it's 15 or 12, uh, prime meat cuts, you'll be able to get a 5% experience buff. And just by completing the Mothman Equinox event, you'll be able to get another 5% experience buff. But those two are seasonal events, so they're not around as much. But just to keep in mind, just in case there was a double XP that, uh, fell under those, one, any of those events. So, Yeah. But that about covers it, friends. I will leave a link below with everything uh, together so you guys will be able to kind of have that as a spreadsheet if you would like. Um, but yeah, I hope I didn't miss anything this time around. But yeah, this is an updated version of the previous video, which I'll also leave a link below if you want to check that out. It's technically the same thing, but missing a few, quite a few things. Um, yeah but anywho um i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did uh, let me know in the comments and i would like to know how high you guys get your intelligence for farming experience because for me it's around 73 uh intelligence i could go more but since i only farm west tech 73 to 76 it's just the sweet spot for max experience um but yeah during a double xp weekend though not any other time yeah anyways hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and again thank you so much for watching as always happy hunting good luck and i'll see you guys in the next video peace